this is the GIS News Hour for Monday, December 6. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, top finance official speaks of government's challenges to strengthen economic management. Annual review of Canada Caribbean Seasonal Agriculture Program underway in Grenada, and local medical officials worried about the increasing prevalence of asthma in the country. Those were the headlines. Details are next. Does bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared. You're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice walk away let's all get involved talk to someone today about the way you feel call the legal aid and counseling clinic or the ministry of social services a message from the wellness committee Welcome back, viewers. The Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance has spoken of the challenges government faces on a daily basis in its quest to strengthen economic management. Mr. Timothy Antwine says one of their major challenges in this difficult economic environment is the need to do more with less and optimize the use of their resources. He was addressing the start of a training session for the use of RADATAM. Every day, we in the Ministry of Finance deal with the issue of having $100 but having demands for a thousand. And very often the simple question that we have to basically answer is how do we spend this hundred dollars that we have? We have requests for a thousand dollars. Even as we speak, we're doing the preparation for the 2011 budget and I can tell you, um, we have more than twice the amount in requests for capital expenditure that we actually have, um, that we will actually be able to fund in 2011. And so this question of how do you allocate scarce resources among competing wants, the ultimate challenge of economics, the ultimate challenge of ministries of finance, the ultimate challenge of governments in this very difficult economic environment, is a very important question. And clearly, for us to be able to make reasoned and informed decisions, we've got to have information. And so we see today's training as a contribution to our efforts to improve our ability to make evidence-based policies, to be able to advise ministers and ultimately cabinets about where best to deploy the limited resources at our disposal. Radatam is the retrieval of data for small areas by microcomputer, and it's a software program that provides users with a quick and easy means of creating, processing, and accessing databases from censuses or surveys for analysis. It will form part of the preparatory activities for the 2011 Population and Housing Census. Among other uses, Radatam currently facilitates microdata analysis via the internet. The key facilitator, Ms. Alejandra Silva, says Radatam is a tool for dissemination of information and is used to manage information like population data, household and agriculture surveys, and vital statistics. The importance of sociodemographic information lies in its potential to support decision making in the public sector and to be able to access the data, we need updated tools for dissemination. So it is necessary to disseminate 
and to make data accessible to all users. That's a trend increasingly observed in our countries during these last years. And this has been the Celades aspiration with the development of this tool, the democratization of information to move the data outside the national statistical offices so all the ministries, all the universities, all public can have the data and use it for public policies. The training began on Monday at the Bureau of Standards Conference Room. It involves officers of the CSO, Central Statistic Office, and statistical units in other line ministries. Labour ministers and officials from Grenada and other Caribbean countries and Canada are meeting here for the next week to review the Canada Seasonal Farm Labour Program. The program impacts positively on employment in Grenada and other Caribbean countries, resulting in an increase in remittances and foreign exchange. It is also viewed as an integral part of the social and economic developments of participating countries. During the week, Grenada will seek to increase the number of workers it sends to the farms in Canada. When the Caribbean joined the program many years ago, Grenada has sent more than 100 workers, but the numbers have dwindled in recent time to just under 50. Labour Minister Glennis Roberts says the review of the program is taking place at a time when governments throughout the region are facing the challenges of providing safety nets for the vulnerable. She says words like employment and unemployment are key words and thoughts in the minds of people. Grenada's participation in the program dates back to 1976. Minister Roberts says it enabled Grenada to meet some of its labour deficiencies. She outlines are the benefits of partnering with the Canadian Seasonal Agriculture Workers Programme. People are able to be gainfully employed in Canada. The tangible benefits of the programme to our people and countries are well documented. Our workers while in Canada will send remittances, as you heard before, to their families. Remittances represent a fair amount of our national earnings. In the case of Grenada, it is estimated that remittances amongst the 15% of our GDP. There is evidence in Grenada where children of participants, and you would have heard it from the others, have been able to finance themselves a complete tertiary and university level education. I am sure that as we move forward, we will understand the importance of this point. Local medical officials are worried about the increasing prevalence of asthma in the country. Pediatrician Dr. Beverly Nelson says the severity of asthma has moved to another level and this could be in part because many people have become too relaxed about the diagnosis. She says while it can be treated, it is not eliminated from a person who suffers from it. Dr. Nelson warns that it is not to be treated at home. Um, the flu virus is around, the rainy season, all of the lovely green beautiful lush land that we have all the pollen is out there everything is triggering and we have you know all the dusty road all of the road construction and the um, the pipes and what have you all of that all of those are triggers for asthma smoke um, so that combination ladies and gentlemen is dangerous for asthmatics and it means that we have to have our medication we have to have our plans. We have to understand what we should be doing when. And if you do not, please go and ask your physician for help. Do not try to manage your child at home because you have a nebulizer. And in some instances, some parents even have pulse oximeters managing their children at home. No, that is unwise. Yes. It is unwise. And we're not saying that uh, uh, parents are not, um, are all doing this. I'm just saying for the few that are, you know, trying to manage at home, be aware that if your child gets into that respiratory failure phase and becomes critical, that child can teeter to the edge of death. So we want you to be aware that asthma can kill and therefore you should try to get to your health care provider to get yourself educated about the disease. If you find that maybe one of us, and note I say one of us, um, you know, will tend to trivialize it in terms of the amount of material you're being offered on your way out of the door, pin us down. Say, listen, doc. I really feel that I 
don't understand what's going on can you give me some help we have medications out there now like Singular and Zyrtec and, and other anti-allergy medications can, that can prevent the child from triggering. Since many attacks begin at night, Dr. Nelson suggests that parents keep medication at hand to start the healing process and she further warns parents against waiting until the following morning to bring their children to a physician. If you are uncomfortable in any way the child is doing abdominal breathing, coughing continuously, uh, seeming not able to speak, please rush the child immediately to the emergency room. Do not wait until the morning. 